Sounded better the other All time. Right. <laughs> sometimes you win and sometimes you don't on this thing. <laughs> anyway, we're joined by several people on several continents and in several places uh, here this afternoon. And uh, this is the video for Wednesday. In about 20 minutes from now, Mars will be at its closest point uh, to the Earth that it will be in over 2,000 years. And we just completed some ceremonies, and we're going to be talking about that. Some, some of the people that are here are going to be leaving, and others will be staying. Uh, and uh, so those that are ready to leave now are welcome to do so. Mr. Ambassador, I uh, would like you to uh, give a little bit of introduction to what we've just done. Yes, we have been uh, right now having uh, uh, the meeting uh, and uh, with uh, the different continent uh, people, and we've been all... Uh, praying together and also, uh, you know, blowing the shofar and united on the, uh, the quest of God to set humanity free and bring us out of the ignorance and also ask uh, the Creator for forgiveness and sanctifying uh, the planet. Uh, we are joined here also with uh, people from other parts uh, of the world, people united on the course of 555 and uh, from the family structure. Uh, and uh, also some uh, special guests, and that was uh, during the meeting, and uh, the meeting was led by the Red Dragon, and uh, it was uh, a good thing, and as you heard in the beginning, that the shofars were blow being blown from the, all the different uh, continents, and uh, calling for this, uh, basically to start a war and reconciliation of this planet, and uh, finding peace uh, with each other. I will, uh, I'll, you know, let uh, Mr. Uh, Gidon uh, explain a little bit uh, about, uh, you know, the religious ambition from the side of uh, this little bit more deeper than what I do. Okay, if you would feel free to speak. I represent the continent of Africa, and it's sometimes been called the darkest continent. It's a very spiritual continent. People have spiritual on this continent. It's not always directed in the right direction. And we've shown our allegiance today to the creator of the universe. His name is God. And we believe in God and his son, Jesus Christ, who died for us and rose again. And we acknowledge that without him, there's nothing we can do for humanity on each continent. Because the Bible said that without finance, people perish. No, that's not true. 
It says, <laughs> for lack of vision, not for lack of finance. That's what it says. So in order for us to... <laughs> Why are you laughing? <laughs> Without finance, the people perish. That's the belief system of most people on the planet right now. <laughs> That's the mammon system. They, they've been deceived. And it's quite clear what the Bible says, that without vision, people will perish. And I'm happy to share with you this afternoon, or where it is in my, my part of the world, it's going into evening, that my personal vision is to fulfill God's destiny and purpose, to generate and distribute financial seed into good soil. That's what my vision is. And to experience his presence in my life in order that I can share it with others for the high calling that we have. This is a high calling. It's not just a calling. If you call to do business or become uh, a pastor, that's a calling. But this is a high calling because we have such responsibility. And David mentioned earlier, we've set up, we've entered into a covenant relationship here, not only with one another, but with, with God. And I'm not sure that you fully understand, because I didn't at first, that a covenant is very different to, to a contract. In the world system, we have a contract in marriage, for instance, a contract in business. And there's often an exit clause in that contract. If somebody breaches that contract, you have permission to break that contract and leave, an exit. Well, a covenant between God and man cannot be broken. It's a covenant that is everlasting. And if you break it, you break it at your peril. God says that marriage is a covenant, in fact. So we have no right to break it. But man being who he is, he does break the contract, which he set up on a piece of paper. But today has been a significant day because we have a covenant to do what we've got to do in terms of fulfilling our destiny and purpose in each continent. And it's a huge responsibility because I'm not accountable to any one of you. I'm responsible and accountable to God. And if I fail, I, I'm responsible and accountable to Him. So I take this calling extremely seriously. And the qualification process that you've been through with man is one thing. But the qualification that you require in order to be an ambassador and a representative of your continent is God given. And we dare not abuse that because there are consequences. So I'm just glad that we, we, we have come together in unity because where there's unity, there's definitely strength. And God will bless our relationship and our, um, our responsibility if we are in unity in everything that we do. So if anybody ever has anything to uh, bring up that is considered to be this unity, we need to talk about it. We need to put it on the table so that we can understand the other's point of view because we do not want disunity in our group and on, on the continent, because each one is dovetailing into the other. And if we're all going in the same direction, then we have unity. If we're all doing the same things, we have unity. So it's very important that we work together in unity in this covenant relationship that we have. Thank you. Sorry, uh, uh, we also uh, have a, a lady, uh, Jace, who I never met till today, uh, and only briefly here before we uh, began recording, but she's in Ecuador, and I want to give you an opportunity to speak if you'd like to. Thank you. I, I appreciate that opportunity, and uh, I'm calling on Christ to um, speak through me, um, because I am a servant of God, and... Um, I know that uh, uh, he was the one that um, chose me and uh, delivered me and liberated me so that I can be here today. And I am so grateful because he has forgiven me for my sins and I am in constant repentance. 
on almost it seems like 24 7 you know as things come up and um, I ask for protection from my father and I give myself to him every day and I give my life and my family to him so that he opened the doors that are his and close the ones that are not and that his will is the will that I do every day and not mine um, I am grateful for this opportunity to share this with you and whoever is listening to this because I'm really no one without the Father and the Son, my, my brother, Christ, Jesus, in his honor and for his glory and his power. I am his testimony today that I have been delivered and that I've been able to die to this flesh and um, that I, I constantly seek him and seek to know him and I find this opportunity to be with you today and to share this as a testimony to him there has been times in my life where I know that I myself Jace couldn't have done it <laughs> couldn't have uh, overcome it couldn't have created that breakthrough in my life but he's the one that has carried me through and he's the one that has increased my faith on a day-to-day -day basis as I get to know him in every possible way and as I speak testimony to whoever I, inter I, I touch on a daily basis. When I usually pray to him since I was very little, um, I've always prayed in Spanish because that, that's my first language. I learned Spanish first and... Um, and so, you know, at times, you know, when he touches me, and I know that we pray today, it's so important for us to go back to our mother tongue to really feel, you know, in our hearts, because it's, it's where he first touched us and when, where we first experienced him. Um, I know that the Father has always been with me. I've, I've, fe I've felt his presence, but even more, in, as I've gotten older and I've had to overcome temptation, and transgressions, um, I, I, I feel his presence in my life now more, and, more than ever. And today, I felt the presence of the Holy Spirit. And I felt the purpose and his divine will manifesting that it was done, that it has manifested, that our faith is there. And I, I'm grateful that I've always had that faith carry me through because there's just so many things in this world that confuse us and distract us and create doubt. And I am um, humbled once again, as I shared with you earlier, uh, to be in his presence today and to ask for forgiveness for humanity. I was actually in prayer yesterday uh, exactly on, on that topic. The Lord put that in my heart just to pray and ask for forgiveness and if we have to shed tears for our brothers and sisters to find their way back to to God and his goodness and to seek his perfection let it be so thank you I appreciate this opportunity thank you Jace real change did you want to say anything I'm just humbled to be a part of this gathering you know as the scripture says where two or more are gathered in Christ's name he'll be with us in spirit giving us strength and giving us purpose, giving us direction. And I'm just honored to be uh, a part of that. Uh, most of my life, uh, I've, uh, this is my 40th year to accept Christ's calling to follow him. And I've not always been perfect. I've been a sinner. I've had my doubts. I've lost some faith along the way. But Christ has tried me, and it's, it's, it's gone through, uh, I've gone through the fire. And I continue to go through the fire, and I continue to be refined. But through this process, I see and I sense and I hear a cry of the world for hope and for change. And just to let you know that God has brought us that change, if we'll only accept him, if we'll quit trying to make God in our image and accept him for who he is as perfection, as for pure spirit for holiness and we'll try to uh, and we'll seek after with repentance with uh, as the scripture says a contrite heart 
we will speak after uh, we will speak the truth and and uh, quit living these lies and deception and and quit seeking the mammon system as our only hope. Uh, yes, God wants to provide for our needs. He said, "If my eye is on the small sparrow bird, then you know that my eye is on you." And He He cares for us. He cares for your need where you are today. You may be having illness. You may be having sickness. You may have lost a loved one. You may have had a spouse walk out on you, but God cares for you. And God has a plan for you. If you will just humble yourself, pray, confess your sins, repent. Repentance means to have a turnaround. That's what that word means. Turn around and follow him. Put your foot in his footsteps. Let him lead you. And uh, this is the path I've chosen for my life. It works. This is my 40th year. I guarantee no matter what's thrown at you, no matter what the, the darkness uh, this world throws at you, you will be a victory. We are more than conquerors is what his word says. We are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you. Mr. Ambassador, I want to go back to you now. Uh, what, what would you like to add? No, I, I think that everyone, and this is uh, showing our, you know, what's called the difference of ethnicity and different, uh, uh, you know, parts of the world. You know, we, uh, everyone has their own uh, personal relationship with God, you know, the creator. And, uh, you, know, uh, you know, in this world, we're having a lot of uh, different faiths. And, uh, you know, and what unites us all is the belief in uh, a creator. And uh, basically with that, you know, I, uh, I want to say that, uh, you know, it's nice to meet all the other parties from the different continents. And uh, it was nice that they would share their feelings and their sincere feelings on, uh, in their faith uh, to the people and their experience of this uh, praying session that is a multi-religious, if you can see it this way, because in reality, all the... Uh, what's called religious practices is, uh, is unified in this uh, because all uh, you know religious things is, is based on the same fundament and that is uh, the belief in the creator and uh, and the you know and the prophets and the teachings that was brought to us and uh, like I said it's a it's a time for us all to uh, find hope and find trust and unite together in uh, you know in prayers for humanity and uh, for, you know, finding uh, ourselves to, uh, you know, reconciliate with uh, the past and, uh, uh, you know, and stop uh, aggressing on each other and uh, finding peace in, uh, uh, with our neighbors, okay? And uh, I don't know if, uh, if Gideon wants to add something extra on this. Yeah, I think it's important for me to just clarify that I'm not a religious person. Um, because religion has fought more wars in this world than any other phenomena. Amen. But I do have a relationship with Jesus Christ. I gave my life to him many, many years ago. And it's that relationship which is far more important than what people call religion. Religion is destructive. And there's always conflict and argument in religiosity. And unfortunately, the church today tries to become religious through ritual, through symbolism, through man-made laws, which are not going to solve this world's problems. There is only one way to solve this world's problems, and that is by dedicating our life and acknowledging our Savior who died and rose for us again, who gave our sins. Amen. And so I shamedly join this group by saying to you that He is my Savior, and he is my redeemer. And by me giving me, giving him my life many years ago, stands me in good stead to do what I have to do. Because if I can give you a definition of grace, now grace we've always interpreted as being unmerited favor. For those of you who have read books on grace and understand what people like, I forget the author's name in Singapore, um, who wrote a book on, on grace. He said it's unmerited favor. Well, nowhere in the Bible does it say that grace is unmerited favor. 
Grace is God's grace. Mercy is God's mercy. God's love is God's love. But the best definition I can give you of God's grace is found in 2 Corinthians 9, 8. And if you read that when you've got time, I won't quote it for you now, but the, the interpretation of that verse is that God's grace is His empowering presence to do what He called you to do and to be what He called you to be. And that's what God's grace is. And so it's by God's grace that I'm doing what I'm doing today and that I'm being what He created me to be. And I consider this an absolute privilege to be part of this team, to be called by God to do what we are doing and we endeavor to do for humanity. Um, but it goes beyond just providing finance for those that need it, for providing food, for, for, for providing shelter and medical uh, provision. It goes beyond that because my calling is to defend the kingdom of God and to search for people who are crying out, who do not have Christ in their lives, that they have eternal damnation. And it's my responsibility to declare that to the world, that there is hope, that there is peace, that there is somebody that is greater than ourselves, whose name is Jesus Christ, who died for us and forgave us, that he offers hope, which will give us eternal life. Thank you. Amen. Yeah, I, uh, you know, this is my 1,300 uh, video. I've been doing a video every day for those of you who are on it here with me that you don't know on YouTube and Facebook and uh, people that have, have watched me faithfully since 2011, January 2011. And those of you know that, that my, my belief is, having been raised a fundamentalist Christian, that Christ is in everyone. Now, my fa Christian family doesn't buy that. But what do I mean by Christ? The divine is simply in everything that's been made. Nothing is made without God. In and of God, all things consist. That's con congruent with the scriptures. As I understand the scriptures, it's something that is not divisive, but uniting. And I do not want people, I, I appreciate people's testimony of what Jesus means to them, and Jesus means a lot to me. I've always been a lover of Jesus since I was a little boy. But I've learned to recognize the divine in everyone, which is why I end almost every one of my programs with namaste, which simply, in it's a Hindu word, if you will, or a word from India, which means the Christ in me, or the light in me, or the divine in me, recognizes that in you, and I'm humbled, and I honor you. And we need to honor one another if we're going to uh, allow the Spirit of God that's in each of us to, to raise us up so that we can heal the land. And it is important that we confess our sins and our shortcomings, our transgressions, our iniquities, as we discussed in our preliminary meeting. We did pour oil and wine onto the, onto the earth to heal the earth, to heal the land, because God gave us a high call to unite the people in truth, to unite the people in faith. And it's not a religious faith. It's a faith in our creator. It's a faith in a divine plan that God has written on the fleshy tables of our heart. It's a faith that goes beyond our creeds and our doctrines and our holy books. It's a faith that is, that is in the very fabric of our being. And we need to wake up to the Christ within us, to the God within us. I know Christians that were raised as Christians that found a, a closer walk with God when they became Buddhists, for example. Now, that may be offensive to some Christians, but I've known people that could not find in their Christian churches what, it, what they needed to become more peaceful and more whole and more aware of the presence of God because of various religious things that went on in their homes. I'm one of those. Not that I've forsaken Christ, I certainly have not. But I've incorporated Christ into everything and to see Christ in everyone. And I believe that that is the vision Without a vision, the people perish. 
My vision is for each of us to recognize that God loves us. And Paradox Man 316, the 316 comes from John 316. For God so loved the world. It's not a crime to love the world, even though later in the Bible it says, if any man loved the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's one of the contradictions. If God loved the world, I choose to love the world too. And I choose to love and see Christ in everyone, beyond religion, beyond belief, beyond creed. And I thank each of you for listening and each of you for participating today. And I pray with all of my heart that the Holy Spirit might make God real to you. Whatever religion, whichever way you choose to express your faith, that God might be real in your life and that you might transcend religious doctrine and belief and go to the personal relationship with the one who made us all. That's my message of peace to the world. Mr. Ambassador, do you want to say anything in closing? Yes, I wanted to state that, uh, you know, that uh, also, you know, peace or uh, Islam and salam and peace to all people. Okay, and shalom. And uh, also I would uh, like to uh, state that uh, uh, family has a lot of uh, religious diversity. We have, uh, you know, you know, we have uh, Muslims, we have Jews, we have Christians, we have... Uh, you know, Hindus, we have all religions on the planet, but we all share the one creator. And it's important for us that, uh, who, you know, whatever religion we belong to is that we respect each other and find the unity in the creator and uh, follow, the, uh, you know, the prophets by example. And uh, we're through that, you know, we will be able to overcome uh, whatever evil we have in the world. And as I stated many times before, that we ourselves are the decision maker for good and evil. And if we do good, uh, the world will be set free. And uh, it was very nice for me uh, to have all uh, you, Gavin, and sharing your personal experience. This was a, a, you know, a very personal experience for many people, and all of them reflect from their own heart and from their own uh, words. And it was very nice to speak to all of you. And uh, I'd like to ask if anyone else has something final to say, and uh, then I will li leave it. No, thank you for listening, and thank you for participating, and I look forward to meeting you in person sometime soon. God willing. Let's, let's make Israel happen. Yes. Yes, yes the spiritual Israel. <laughs> yes. Very good. <laughs> really important to make that distinction. <laughs> uh, I, I will say that we had intended to have representatives from Australia uh, with us today, but uh, unfortunately, they were unable to connect. Uh, however, I was I'm an adopted Australian. When I was part of a of a previous team of the Kingdom of God Sky Earth. Uh, I was adopted as an Australian delegate, even though I live in the United States. So in a sense, I sort of represented Australia too. So <laughs> thank, thank you for all, each of you for participating and each of you for listening. And may God bless each one of you. And as I always say, namaste. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you.